Hey everyone! So I wanted to do a quick little study on how you can use glazes to put in lighting and depth and make things 3D after the fact. Um, this technique works really well, especially on areas you have a lot of pattern or something. So real quick, I'm going to put a pattern on this kind of cube shape we've got here, but I'm going to apply the pattern flat. Um, the reason it works so well on pattern is because you don't want to keep remixing your colors every time you have to like shift a plane or like figure out every moment that the light might hit. So it's nice to be able to just draw the whole pattern and then apply the light after. The shadows do tend to, uh, this method, glazing, it is opaque. So as it goes over, it sort of hides parts of your pattern. It might make, you know, your shadows kind of, as they get darker, especially they hide a lot of the background. But uh, that kind of makes sense if you think about things going into shadow. They kind of get blurry and you don't see them as clearly. So I'm going to use a bit of Payne's Gray in this glazing medium right here. So for my first attack, I'm going to do pretty thinned out with the glazing medium. As you mix it, it does tend to make your paint look like you're actually getting lighter in color. And you can always test it on a white background to see just how transparent it is. So first off, I've picked my light source up in that right hand top corner. So I'm going to start shading in the left hand side. That didn't really show up because I've already got kind of a dark color down on the cube. So bumped up my percentage of like Payne's Gray to glazing medium. So it's a little less transparent and already you can see how quickly we're just starting to add light. It does, you can see it sort of building up on top of the underpainting um, and how that starts to hide things. But it does very quickly give you a lighting effect, which is nice. So as I glaze across the top, I'm not only thinning it out with more glazing medium to make it more transparent because I don't want the shadow as dark, but I'm adding something to warm it up just a touch too. So it's not the same quality of light all the way around. Because I don't want these two sides to be as dark or as cool as our deepest shadow, which is on the left hand side, right? So here I'm mixing white and yellow because I like to add a little warmth to my light sources. As you know, this is super <laughs> opaque. Um, when you have white in your medium, it's really hard to tell if it's opaque or not until you put it over something. Um, so keep that in mind. But with the yellow, it's a little easier. So this one's very thin. There's a lot of medium in there. You can see it's just barely warming it up. It's changing the greens mostly. And that's called optical blending. This is entirely dry, so as we're brushing pigment over it, our brain is like compressing the pigment. It's not actually blending the colors, right? I am not waiting for this to dry, like as I'm in the glazing section, I'm letting my glazes kind of wet blend on the page, uh, which is how I like to work. But if you wanted to, you could certainly let each pass of glaze dry and then come back over it. So I'm doing another pass of the Payne's Gray. Um, you can kind of build it up, it's buildable coverage. So if I do multiple passes of transparent layers, eventually it will become opaque, right? And the thinner, um, the thinner the glaze and the drier your brushes, the thinner the application onto your painting is going to be. So if you have a lot of it on there, even if it's very thin, it can kind of gob up on you. But if you have very little of the paint on your brush, then you'll end up with a little bit of a thinner application. So white into glaze for this very top highlight here. Um, white is one of the most opaque paints you're going to have in your kit, which is why we treat it very delicately. There's a lot of medium in this. It also, um, you can't tell how, how mixed it is. So you'll see I'm swiping it over kind of the edge of where I did the paints gray before instead of testing it on white. And you can see how much it affects the underpainting, even more than the shadow, so use it sparingly, but it is nice for like a bright highlight area. So this is the Payne's Gray with no medium in it. Um, it's pretty dark, where I put it straight onto the paper so you can see how much the medium changes and affects that. So you can see that pretty quickly we've been able to get a lot of light on this, which is some flat application and um, some glazing over that. I hope that that helps. You can think about how you could apply this to different walls, to different room situations, objects, people. It's a method that works well in all sorts of areas if you're having trouble planning ahead and picturing the light in advance. All right. 